Hello, and welcome to Al's Air Guns. This is a follow-up episode. Uh, about four weeks back, we did a, a episode called More Power Upgrades for the Crossman 1377. And why I called it More Power Upgrades, I had done an earlier uh, episode or video on upgrading the power on a 1377, in which I stated the easiest power upgrade for them was a conversion to 22 caliber with a 14 inch barrel on there. Now that is certainly still true. It's very cost effective and straightforward way to handle things. However, when visiting family in the Midwest, I came to learn that some states like the state of Illinois pretty much uh, have almost a prohibition on 22 caliber air guns. Now you can own them, but they have to be handled as a firearm. They require a firearm identification owner's card and um, that kind of thing. And the result of that has been for most retailers to stop handling them as air guns and also for companies, uh, the online retailers, to place restrictions on selling or sending those air guns to Illinois. Because of that, I went back and wanted to revisit power upgrades for the 1377 that leave it in its original 177 caliber. These same states, again, I'll pick on Illinois, make allowances for 177 caliber, and they pretty much let you um, get whatever power level in that caliber you want. So it's silly. Um, a, a 200 foot per second 22 caliber air gun is considered a firearm, but a 1200 feet per second uh, brake barrel in 177 caliber is considered an air gun. Anyway, that got me back to looking at ways that we can improve the power on the 1377 to make it more appropriate for pesting and perhaps even a little light, uh, small, small game hunting. In doing that, we looked at a number of things. This is a gun that I'd started to build up a while ago, did some real light valve work on it, um, but went ahead and installed a hinge pin upgrade kit from Buckrail. Also put Buckrail's replacement front end on here so that we both get a better sight, but more importantly, we get a thread at the muzzle here that allows us to go ahead and add suppressors or, or any kind of muzzle device there. Now, actually, it is a proprietary thread, so, you know, it's not universal. But, for instance, Buckrail makes this really good suppressor that we've gone ahead and added to it. So, we did some very light modifications. The hinge kit is really important because of, that really gives us the ability to uh, pump the gun to higher pressures without damaging uh, all of this apparatus and ruining the gun. One of the things I wanted to do before I go over, uh, the first thing we've done is gone ahead and put together some data benchmarking the performance of the gun as it is today. Now, before I talk about those numbers, um, I want to talk about real-world 1377 performance. You know, uh, I worry when I publish this, I'll start to get feedback along the lines. Oop, let me um, reframe here. Worrying that I'm going to get, uh, well, basically comments in the comment area that tell me things like, well, you know, a basic uh, 1377 gets 600 feet per second because that's what it says in the documentation. Well, not in the real world and not with any pellet that you're going to buy easily, not with the standard pellet. Actually, if you're not familiar with Tom Gaylord, uh, he's also referred to as the grandfather of air guns. Tom has been an air gun writer for years. He's also for many years published the blog at Pyramid Air uh, under the pseudonym uh, BB Pelletier and then also under his own real name, Tom Gaylord. Now, Tom's done a couple of series on the 1377, and he did a very thorough three-part series back in about 2008. One of the first things Tom did was tested the velocity and performance of a standard gun. 
And in his uh, research, and, and this was consistent with my own experience as well, using a 7.9 grain pellet, which uh, Crossman Premier is what he was using at that weight, you see at 10 pumps, 515 feet per second. And that's, that's a very real world number. That converts to a muzzle energy of 4.65 pounds. Now, yes, he was able to find a pellet using the uh, discontinued, using the discontinued Crossman Silver Eagles, which I think were like a 4 to um, 5.1 grain pellet. Uh, he was able to get a 604 feet per second uh, reading. Uh, those aren't made anymore, but, you know, uh, something similar would be like your Crossman Fast Flights here or your Gamo Raptors. So, yeah, the gun says 600 feet per second, but um, that's not with a standard weight lead pellet, and that is with a pretty exotic and very light uh, pellet anyway. Now, in that series, he showed that you know, 10 pumps was about the maximum. As you began to pump over that, you either didn't get much speed addition or at one point it started to go down. He also felt like he reduced the performance of his gun overall when he did the over pumping tests. Now, whether or not that's going to be true for most production versions, I don't know. But that is why we go through the trouble of putting in the upgraded hinge kit like the one here from Buckrail and um, also had done some light valve work on it. So that being said, let's talk about the results we found in the benchmark testing. Okay, as far as performance in this air gun, using the Crossman uh, destroyers here, and um, yeah, those are the premier destroyer with the hollow point. That is a 7.4 grain pellet. And what we found is at 20 pumps in this, we got an average speed of 641 feet per second. That not or that turned into a muzzle energy of 6.75 foot pounds. When we moved that up to 25 pumps, we moved our average um, feet per second up to 649.33 uh, feet per second, which brought the muzzle energy up to 692 foot-pounds of energy. Now, we also shot the RWS Superdomes. Very good pellet, very accurate, good for hunting. They're an 8.3 grain lead pellet, and at 20 pumps, we saw an average of 592 feet per second for a muzzle energy of 6.46 foot-pounds. So remember, we were looking at an initial no stock muzzle energy of 4.65 foot-pounds using a 7.9 grain uh, lead pellet. So the increase there is significant. I'm not sure if I mentioned it or not. At 25 pumps, the um, Superdomes were turning in a velocity of 600. 13 feet per second for a muzzle energy of 6.93 foot-pounds. We also tested the 177 caliber Gamo uh, round lead balls in this pistol, and they turned in at 15 pumps an average of 593 feet per second for a muzzle energy of 6.4 foot-pounds. And at 20 pumps, they gave us 617 feet per second for 693 uh, foot-pounds of muzzle energy. 25 pumps brought that up to 623 in terms of feet per second and 7.07 .07 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. 30 pumps with the Gamma round ball topped out at 625 feet per second average and a muzzle energy of 7.1 uh, foot-pounds. That was pretty much our power leader and the ones that we've tested. Now, in terms of, you know, velocity leader, 
We did have some of the original Gamo um, Raptors, the 5.1 grain uh, alloy pellet, 15 pumps with 700 feet per second or 5.55 foot pounds, 20 pumps, 737 feet per second for a 6.15 foot pounds muzzle energy, 25 pumps actually saw a drop down to 532 feet per second for uh, 6.07 foot-pounds of energy. And at 30 pumps, we maxed at 739 feet per second and 6.19 foot-pounds of energy. So from where we stood right now, I think um, 30 pumps is a maximum. Often we're not getting any additional value to go higher at that and it looks like our maximum muzzle energy we generated was uh, 711 or 7.11 uh, foot pounds of energy now considering we were what 4.6 in the um, stock form i feel like that's a very substantial increase for some relatively minor and inexpensive upgrades. Now, my plan here was to take this further and do some more modifications for additional power out of the valve and the possibility of getting more than one shot at a given number of pumps. So we will go ahead and talk about that in the next episode. I did want to mention we tried the Crossman Fast Flights and the only data I have for them right now was at 25 pumps. They are a 5.4 grain pellet. At 25 pumps, we saw an average of 681 feet per second and 5.56 foot pounds. So that's our benchmark with a lightly modified pistol, you know, that we've done the basics you need to if you want to do over pumping and um, get this kind of performance out of it. We will be taking it farther. I should mention with the numbers that I, I talked about today, there was no air left in the valve. We were getting a complete uh, discharge of, of all of the air, and that is what we want at this level. And we will continue to tune the pistol and see if we can't get a little bit more power out of it yet. So those are the numbers. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care.